basically jaundice uh, is something so common, very common, almost all babies have it. So, um, and, and parents usually get very worried about it because uh, I think they would have read somewhere that you know high jaundice is actually very dangerous to the baby. So, which is actually true. Now, jaundice is what we say when the, the baby is having yellowing of the eyes and also the, the, the skin. So, when the jaundice happens, it usually starts from the eye. In babies, it's pretty difficult to see uh, because they are sleeping most of the time. So after eyes, they go to the face and it, it go downwards. So basically, the lower down it goes, the more severe the jaundice is. Now it can happen at any time from day one of uh, when the baby was born uh, up to day three, day four. So, but the earlier the jaundice happens, the more dangerous it is that we have to be more often. Um, the, the, the substance that causes jaundice is called bilirubin and bilirubin is formed when your red blood cell is broken down. So in normal condition, bilirubin is, has to be processed by our liver before it is being excreted out from the body via your urine and also your stools. So, uh, but the problem comes, baby are just born, the liver is immature. Uh, so they cannot handle that much of bilirubin. So when you have a lot of bilirubin waiting to be processed and the liver has the capacity, a uh, capability of the, the liver is limited, then you get uh, accumulation of bilirubin and this causes what we see, jaundice. Okay, so this is called physiological jaundice. Happens usually about day two, day three of life, going up until day seven, day eight, then it will slowly go down. The second group of jaundice is actually called pathological jaundice. So generally, if it happens within the first 24 hours of life, it is always pathological. Usually, the jaundice builds up, builds up much faster. So you will see the jaundice going up very high, and when the jaundice is very high, you do see symptoms faster. So symptoms are uh, include you know very yellow jaundice baby. The baby might be uh, uh, excessively sleepy, not sleeping all the time, not drinking, not active, passing very little urine, and uh, passing those very very little or it can also be the other way around the baby is crying all the time because of the jaundice is too high that is also possible jaundice within the first week of life if the bilirubin level is too high it can actually cross our brain if it crosses the baby's brain going into the brain then it damages the brain and when it damages the brain the damage is permanent so this is of course something that we would want to uh, avoid so that is the reason why we have to be you know very um, careful in monitoring the baby's jaundice level and the symptoms to make sure that it doesn't go to that level. Now physiological jaundice as I mentioned just now it is part of a normal physiology so you can't really uh, uh, do anything to avoid it but what you can do is to avoid high jaundice to, to avoid what the bilirubin level to go so high that it damages the brain. So what I usually tell parents to do is first thing is to make sure the baby is feeding well. So how about how much of feeding? It depends on the baby's um, at which day of life but generally if you are breastfeeding the baby should be able to uh, breastfeed about 15-20 minutes and able to pass urine about six to seven times a day and the color of the urine should be clear like water because we, we know that bilirubin is excreted from the body via the urine and also the stools if the baby is not drinking well uh, they get dehydrated they, they don't pass out urine the bilirubin are not excreted out it builds up in the body it can go scarily high then some of the Cosmetic Center like Beyond 28 have what we call a truncutaneous bilirubinometer. So it is um, pretty much like you know a, a machine that you are scanning for your, for your temperature. Everyone is very familiar with the uh, infrared thermometer. So you scan and you get a reading. So the guideline uh, uh, recommends that if the jaundice level goes up higher uh, than 200, then it will be necessary to perform a blood test to confirm the, the level of the jaundice. So there is a table you know, from our Malaysian CPG guideline saying that how much is what is the level of the jaundice that requires focal therapy. When it's, um, and when it's high, then we need to refer the baby for blood test to confirm. And if the, conf if the blood test is really high, then you have to go to the treatment, treatment which is usually phototherapy. Well, phototherapy is a form of treatment, treatment for jaundice. It's the main treatment of jaundice because um, the photo light at a certain wavelength, uh, usually blue, blue lights, uh, can effectively bring down the jaundice level. So, but the thing is, the photo light, although it is, we always say it's very safe for the baby now because most of our LED lights, it is still not without any risk. So it should be done in a, in a medical center or a hospital where the nurses are trained to use the, the machine and the doctors are there to monitor for the baby. So I still think that if a baby requires phototherapy, it should be uh, referred to a medical center or a hospital for proper, good quality phototherapy. 
Um, a lot of times parents are very worried about jaundice and some may even go to the extent of blaming themselves for why their baby is having so high jaundice. Is this something that they have done? Is this something they've done during the pregnancy or maybe you know, during delivery that caused the baby to have such high jaundice? Now most of the time it's not the fault of the mother. So I, I think the mothers should need to, to, to you know, not to be too too harsh on themselves regarding the jaundice. Talk to your doctor first to make sure that you understand the condition of the baby. The most important thing is to make sure the baby is safe, getting treatment if the baby requires, you know, and can uh, be in a safe place with proper monitoring so he doesn't go into problems.